<clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> there's Periscope and there's Facebook. God bless you. PET here, Prophet David Taylor. I'm here for a weekly prophetic word. And uh, let's just jump right in. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your wonderful blessings, oh God. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us, oh God, because we cannot count your faithfulness, oh Lord, because you don't slumber and you don't sleep, and every morning you load us with new blessings, oh God, whether we realize it or not, whether we thank you or not. You're still faithful to us, oh God, regardless of our behavior, and that just blows my mind. So I praise you, I laud you, I magnify you, I glorify you, I give you all the glory that's due your name. And I ask you to fill me with the Holy Ghost, oh God. I surrender my mind, my brain, my lips, my thoughts, my hand gestures, everything, oh God, so that you can flow through me, so that you can deliver the word that you want delivered to your people, that you might be glorified and that they might be edified and that the demons might be terrified, oh God. Have your way in this broadcast, and we thank you for it, and we believe you for it, and I give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the true and the living God. Amen. All right. So, as you know, I'm on <clears throat> every Sunday, this time 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, I'm also on the second Thursday of every month for my No More Genie series. And right now I'm working on uh, a series called We Do It Wrong under No More Genies. And uh, so I will be on again on August 8th. So August 8th is my next No More Genies at 7 p.m. Okay? All right, so uh, let's look at the prophetic word for today. Because as I was listening to the Holy Spirit give it to me, there was some other stuff coming out. A scripture reference is going to, well, the prophetic word for today is called whole heart. Whole heart. And we're going to look at our scripture reference right here. In Psalm, the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible, biggest book of the, uh, one of the biggest books of the Bible, because Jeremiah and Isaiah are actually bigger, but Psalms is in the top five uh, largest books in the Bible. Uh, Psalm chapter 9, verse 1, and I'm reading out of the King James Version, and it says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Now, there are many scriptures that King David and the writers of the Psalms use to talk about the wholeheartedness. For example, Psalm 86, 12, with all my heart, I will praise you. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my, all my heart or with my whole heart. Okay? And there's some hymns called with my whole heart. So why is that significant? Where there's two things that the Holy Spirit was showing me that he wanted me to communicate today. The first thing is we have to look at a companion scripture. That's Revelation 2.4. Revelation is the last book in the Bible, last book in the New Testament. It says, um, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 says, But I have this against you. That's the Lord talking to the church. But I have this against you. You have abandoned your first love. So the first interpretation or understanding of the phrase, your whole heart is, you have to ask yourself, do you love the Lord like you used to? Do you love the Lord like you did when you first got saved? And do you love him with your whole heart? Why is that so important? I mean, even the, the minister this morning uh, at my church talked about, talked about it. Why is that so important? The answer to that question is because we have gotten so caught up. And when I say we, I mean primarily American Protestants, American Protestant Christians. We've gotten so caught up in busyness and mega churches and being famous and being on TV and trying to be somebody. But the whole entrance into this relationship thing with God was based on love. It was based on his love. It was based on father's love for us expressed by sending the son. And it's based on the son's love for us expressed by him giving his life. And it's expressed by the Holy Spirit's love for us, by him coming to abide with us and dwell in us and teach us all things and be our connection to heaven, be our connection to Father and Son. Because without the Holy Ghost, we are dead in the water. We have no connection to Jesus without the Holy Ghost. 
Not possible. We can't even have a revelation that Jesus is the Christ without the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost expresses his love by giving us gifts and revelation and teaching and education and conviction and showing us the way of righteousness and doing all the things that Jesus would do if he was here walking around in his human body. But when the Lord is on earth in his human body, he can only be one place at a time. So he sent back the Holy Ghost that can be with us, all of us at the same time, all over the world. Don't ask me how that's possible. I do not understand the logistics. I don't know how the Holy Ghost can be in all of us at the same time. I just know he is. My son asked me that one time when he was like four years old. He's like, Dad, how come the Holy Ghost be over here in me and be over there in you? I don't know. I don't know. I just know he can. But the entrance into this whole thing was love. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the first part of wholeheartedness is, do you love the Lord? like you used to, and do you love the Lord with your whole heart? Or are you in this thing because you want a new car? Are you in this thing because you want a new house? Are you in this thing because you heard the prosperity message and you fell so in love with the idea of getting things from God and getting a better life? Is that why you go to church? Is that why you do what you do? Or do you do what you do because you love the Lord? Because that's how this whole thing started. And if you got into Christianity any other way, you missed it. If you got into Christianity any other way or for any other reason, then Father expressing his love for us and Jesus expressing his love for us and Holy Spirit expressing his love for us, then you missed it. That's why so many Christians miss it. Because this is a love relationship with a person, with a, a, a triune God, three persons in one Godhead, expressing their love for us. Is that why you do what you do? Because you love the Lord. They were talking about this morning about how sometimes church people just don't want to work with other church people, which is true. And how sometimes church people are difficult to get along with, which is true. And a whole bunch of things. Well, you know why that is? All that is carnality. That's because we're not doing what we do because we love the Lord. And if you're doing what you're doing to be seen, man, if you're doing what you're doing to get the praise of men, the Bible says that if you do what you do because you want men to recognize you, then God says enjoy that because that's all you're going to get. You can't have the reward or, or, or try to please man and try to please God. You have to pick one of the two. And if you've chosen to do what you do because you want power and position in the church, because you want to be seen and all the different kind of stuff, then you're not doing what you do because you love the Lord. And that doesn't even mean anything in God's kingdom. So the first part of wholeheartedness is do you, do you do what you do because you love the Lord? But part number two is, do you love the Lord with your whole heart? What do I mean, do you love the Lord with, the whole, with your whole heart? On the second part. The second part is, huh, <laughs> well, no easy way to say it, so I'll just say it. The second part is, is there anything that you hold back from God? Is there anything that you don't, you're not honest with God about? Is there anything that you... Uh, uh, keep from the Lord? Is there any area of your life that you don't want to talk to the Lord about? Is there anything that you just don't want to deal with God on? Are you holding things back from God? Do you love Him with your whole heart or do you love Him with a partial heart? Like, do you have like one foot in the world? Like, I'm going to hold on to some of my worldly things in case this Christian thing don't work out. I got back up over here. You know, do you love Him like that with a divided heart? Do you, you know, is he your priority? When you get up in the morning, do you, do you give God his due at the top of the day? When God commands us to tithe, and tithe means tenth, it means we're supposed to take one dime out of every dollar off the top and put that in the house of God. And then we also have to pay an offering. But God wants his off the top. He wants the first fruits. Well, the same thing holds, holds true for your day. Like when you wake up in the morning, do you start your day with the Lord? Do you give the Lord the first fruits? Or do you give God what's left over? Do you just jump into your day and the only thing you do in the morning is grab a cup of coffee and maybe watch the news and then run out the door to the job and say, well, I'll pray later, whatever. Is that how you treat the Lord? Is that how your relationship with God is? That he's an afterthought, okay, that, that you don't really want him in your time, in your schedule. You don't want Jesus rearranging you. Yeah, I don't know, Lord, I don't want to deal with that. Just let me do what I want to do. What about your child ring? What about the way you raise your kids? Do you love the Lord enough to turn your kids over to the Lord, to his purposes? 
I knew somebody once who was so controlling and so carnal in their ways that they always wanted their kids to stay close to home and they didn't want their kids to go anywhere. Well, this particular woman had three children. She had two daughters and one son. Her son felt a call from God to go to China. He felt that like his missionary field was China and that's where God was calling him to go. This woman circulated an email in her church telling everybody to pray against her son leaving because she didn't want him to go all the way over there and my children need to be home for Christmas and that kind of thing. So are you trying to run interference between Jesus and your children? Are you holding on to your children and not turning them over to the Lord and telling God that you don't want to release them to their destiny? Are you loving Jesus with a partial heart? Are you saying to Jesus, I'm only going to give you 30% of my life and the other 70% is mine and I don't want to hear what you have to say and I'm not going to stop doing anything I like doing. I'm not going to change. Okay? So, do you love the Lord like you used to when you first got saved? Do you get involved this thing, in this thing under the guise of love? Do you do what you do because you love the Lord? Number one. But number two, do you love him with your whole heart? Do you love him with everything that you have? Is there anything that you have that you would hold back from Jesus? If Jesus came walking up to you and put his finger on something, do you snatch it back and say, I won't talk about that. I, do you do like that? Or do you love him with all that you have? That's number two. But here's number three. And this one, when I first heard this one, I was, I, you know, I said, what would you say, Holy Ghost? The third part about a whole heart is that your heart needs to be all the way whole. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you have, uh, it's not necessarily sin, you could have infirmity. Infirmity means sickness or weakness or some kind of brokenness. You can recognize infirmity in your body. Like if you break a bone or you have an illness or you have something you've been struggling with for a while, that's not sin, but it's an infirmity. It's a weakness, a brokenness, a broken area in your life. But what if you have infirmity in your soul? What if you have damaged emotions? What if you have uh, infirmity in your mind? What if you have damaged thoughts? Or what if you have infirmity in your spirit? Because your spirit and your soul aren't the same thing. Your spirit and your soul are integrated in you as a person, but your spirit and your soul aren't the same thing. Your soul is your mind and your will and your emotions. So your thoughts, your emotions, and your ability to make choices. So all of your memories, all of your personality, all the different kind of stuff, that's your soul. Your spirit is this. The breath of life inside you, the part that God breathes inside of you when you're in your mother's womb that makes you come alive. That's your spirit. That's where the Holy Ghost lives. And when you die, your spirit steps out of your body and your body goes back to the dust. That's why you can put your hand over the mouth of a dead person or the mouth of a, of a corpse and there's no breathing because the breath of life is gone. That's your spirit. Okay? So, the Holy Ghost has shown me that you need to be whole in there, you need to be whole on the inside because there are a whole lot of Christians walking around with mental, emotional, and choice-based infirmities and infirmities in their spirit and don't know it. So not just do you love the Lord and not just do you love him with your whole heart, but also is your heart whole? So what do I mean more practically? Because you know I like to give practical examples. This is what I mean. Are you carrying bitterness from something that happened in your past? Because if you're carrying bitterness from something that happened in your past, your heart is not whole. And it's impeding your ability to be happy. Are you carrying around? Are you focused on memories? What's the tape that's playing in your mind on a daily basis? Is there a tape playing in your mind that's rehearsing the things of the past, the mistakes of the past, all the different kind of stuff? Is that the kind of thoughts that run around inside of you? Uh, a really big one, a really deep one, is unforgiveness. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Are you walking around with unforgiveness? Because there's no way your heart and your soul are whole if you are full of unforgiveness. And unforgiveness, once it begins to take root, leads to bitterness. Okay? So your heart isn't whole. Uh, let me give you some telltale signs of a lack of a whole heart. One of the ways you know your heart isn't whole is that you can't love freely. How do you love when you're a child? You love freely. Do you hold back when you're a kid? You don't, you don't know how to hold back when you're a kid. You love with your whole heart. 
Uh, what about your first love? What about the first time you fall in love? The first time you fall in love, how do you love? You love unreservedly. You love with your whole heart. You love freely. Can you love like that now? Do you love like that now? Or do you love with all them walls, all that security, all that, you know, all that guarding, all that? Is that how you love? That's how you know whether your heart's whole or not. Okay? Because, again, when you're whole, man, you love freely. You love without reservation. You love without worrying about it. Okay? Do you love like that? And so those three things are what the Holy Ghost gave me to share. I feel a prophetic word coming. I'm going to release a prophetic word in a minute. But so the first checkpoint you have to ask yourself is, do you love the Lord like you did when you first got saved? Are you involved in this thing because of love? Is that what won you to Christ was his love? Because if that didn't happen, you might just uh, be involved like in church work. You might be one of those people who they told you, you know, don't be a bench warmer, don't be a pew member. You know, they told you to get busy, but they never did the work of the church, which is teaching you how to love the Lord and how to grow up in Christ. And you might be one of those believers where you're really, really, really busy, but you don't do what you do because you love the Lord. You do what you do because you want to be seen or because you want a new car. Or maybe you're going to church to get a husband. Or maybe you're going to church for a whole bunch of other reasons. Okay? But you got to do what you do because you love the Lord and for no other reason. But the only way to love the Lord is first to know his love for you. We love him because he first loved us. Okay? So now, if you don't know where to start in the Bible with that, I will tell you where to start. If you're a new Christian and you're just now being introduced to the Bible, or if you're a Christian that wants to either renew your love relationship with Christ, or maybe you want to build a love relationship with Christ that you've never had, the place to start in the Bible is 1 John. Not the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, not that book, but 1 John towards the end of the book, towards Revelation. Uh, because it's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then J and that's right after James, and then there's Jude, and then there's Revelation. So right towards the end of the New Testament of the Bible, you want to start with the epistle of 1st John. That's where you start if you're a new Christian. That's where you start if, you, if you're new to the Bible. And that's where you go if you want to renew your love relationship with Christ. You start reading 1st John. Either read a verse a day or read a chapter a day. And you'll be amazed at, at the love you begin to feel when you feel the way Father, Son, and Holy Ghost love us. Okay? That's where to go to either begin your love relationship with God or renew your love relationship with God if you've lost it. Okay? So part one. Part two, if you're struggling with not loving the Lord with all that you have, the key to that, the way you get past that is you have to surrender. <laughs> You have to go to the Lord and you have to tell him everything that you feel inside. You have to do something you don't want to do and open up your heart and be honest. And you'd be surprised how many people are walking around with lies. You have to go before the Lord and basically strip yourself naked emotionally. And tell the Lord everything that's in your heart and don't hold back. Tell him your fears. Tell him your faults. Tell him your mistakes. Tell him your hopes. Tell him your dreams. Tell him those things that you haven't told anybody else. Tell him those things that you are afraid to admit out loud. And if you've never done that before with anybody, or if you've never done that with Christ, that can be scary or intimidating. But when you do that, you will feel him wrap those loving arms around you. You will feel him love you through your unloveliness. You will feel him love you even when you have to admit some things you don't want to admit or face. So if you don't love the Lord with your whole heart, if there's anything you're holding back, the key or the answer to that, to wait, the way to fix that, is to surrender and open up your heart and tell Jesus everything you're carrying. For example, if you say stuff to God like, you know, Lord, I always wanted to go back to school, but I'm afraid to hope I could go back to school because maybe money's an issue or maybe time's an issue or maybe I feel like I'm too old or maybe, you know, I'm trying to find the major for what I want and maybe it's four states away or maybe I got four kids and I've got to take care of my kids, and I've, I've been putting my dreams of going back to school on hold. Am I ever going to get to do it? Stuff like that. You have to be honest. Okay? you got to be honest about what's going on in your marriage. you got to be honest about what you're feeling. 
That's the way you learn how to love the Lord with your whole heart is you open up and you, you become vulnerable and you tell the Lord everything that's in there. And that might be scary for you if you've never done it before, but that's the way you learn how to trust Jesus with everything is you tell him everything. What you will discover when you do that, because this is what happened to me, what you will discover is the Lord will start showing you his goodness and he'll start answering prayers and he'll start showing you his grace when you start telling him about all those things you've been holding back. There might be some things in your life right now that you're ashamed of, so you don't want to go to the Lord because you don't really want to face him because you're doing some stuff that's not Christ-like. Well, I stopped by to tell you, I understand maybe not wanting to confess some stuff to people, but you can tell Jesus. Like if you have a habit or if you have something that you're struggling with that isn't Christ-like, but you're still doing it, you can go to Jesus with it no matter what it is. I mean like cigarettes, I mean like pro profanity, I mean like adultery, I mean like pornography, I mean like suicidal thoughts, we were just talking about that this morning in church. I mean like whatever you got going on, you can open it up to the Lord and you'll see the Lord begin to love you in spite of your flaws and imperfections. Because deep down that's all what we're afraid of. When Adam and Eve sinned and they realized they were naked, they tried to cover themselves up. Because they were shamed. So the cure to number two, uh, uh, which is loving him with your whole heart, is to open up your whole heart and tell him everything that you're feeling. That's number two. Number three, the cure to get your heart whole, uh, many times comes in many different ways. Normally to work through mental, emotional, and choice-based issues, you need a variety of cures. The first thing you might need is deliverance, okay? Christians cannot be possessed by a demon, possessed by the devil, meaning that the devil can't own you once you're saved, but you can be oppressed, you can be vexed, you can be troubled by the devil or demons. That can happen to you, and you might be carrying some unclean spirits, that you've gotten used to, and they've gotten used to being around, so much so until you don't even recognize that those are unclean spirits. Because there are some people, if something unclean stays in your life for a long time, your personality begins to form around it. And then you start thinking, well, that's just who I am. And that's not who you are. Like if you cuss a lot, if you curse a lot, that is not who you are. What happens is there's some bitterness, there's a breach there's something in your heart that's making all that profanity come out of your mouth. And maybe there's a profanity demon involved that keeps put, putting those curse words in your mouth. And you just keep calling curses every time you cuss. So the first thing you might need is deliverance. Because if you're struggling with something and it looks like you just can't get free and you just keep going back to it and you don't want to do it but you keep going back to it, that's a demon. You need that broken off you. Okay, first thing you need is deliverance. Second thing you might need is forgiveness. Because if you've been hurt, like if you've been molested or raped or kidnapped or abandoned, those wounds go really, really deep. And you might need to work through to a point of forgiveness for whoever did that to you. But you also need Christian counseling. You also need to sit down with a professional Christian counselor, someone who's trained to minister to you in the area of counseling and learn how to talk to them about how you feel and your self-esteem, and what your day-to-day -day life is like, and if you're dealing with depression, all that. And then number four, if you can, you need a confidant in your life. You need like a best friend or two. You need somebody where you don't have to edit, you don't have to filter, where you don't have to put a mask on to be around them, where you can be you, and it's okay. So again, deliverance, um... Uh, 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 deliverance, uh, Christian counseling, um, best friend uh, that you can uh, have a confidant with, uh, forgiveness, I knew I was missing one in there, deliverance, forgiveness, Christian counseling, and a best friend or confidant. Because forgiveness uh, can happen in a moment of time, but what people confuse with forgiveness, they confuse forgiveness and healing. Because you can heal Excuse me, you can forgive like that in a moment of time, but it might take you years to heal. And sometimes people think they haven't forgiven because you still got the scars. Well, I burned myself on an oven back in 1985, and that scar is still right there on my wrist. 
but it doesn't hurt when I touch it because the skin is healed, but the scar is still right there. Your soul is like that. So you may still have some scars, but the way you know you're healed from a scar on your soul is when you can laugh about it, when you can bring it up and it doesn't hurt. But you got to forgive. you got to forgive the debt. Forgiveness does not mean that what they did to you was okay. Forgiveness means you're going to turn the justice over to God and you're going to release the debt so you can go on with your life. And that's where a lot of people get confused. It's not condoning what happened to you. That is not what forgiveness is. If somebody taught you that, they taught you that wrong. Forgiveness is you're saying, I'm going to turn the justice over to God. I'm going to let the Lord defend me. I'm going to let the Lord answer what happened. But I am going to release that person from the debt so I don't have to stay in jail to what happened to me. That's what forgiveness is. So you don't have to walk around. And that's the funny thing, man, about being abused. If you've ever been abused in any kind of way, the person that abused you went on about their business. They went on about their life. Have you ever confronted a high school bully after high school? They don't even remember you. <laughs> it's not funny. They don't even remember you, man. They don't even remember you. Whatever they did to you, they forgot it five minutes after it happened. And here you are coming back to your reunion and you still mad. You need to forgive and you need to heal. It does not mean what they did to you was okay. It means that you're going to turn the justice over to God and you're going to release them from the debt so you don't have to stay in jail to what happened to you. So deliverance is casting out demons. Forgiveness is releasing the debt. And then you need emotional healing. Counseling helps you get that healing as you talk through your feelings. And then if you have a best friend in life where you can just be yourself. That's how you get a whole heart. That's how you make your heart become whole again. Okay? Now I can say a lot more on this subject. I'm just trying to give you some general principles. Because this kind of stuff runs deep. But I would be here three hours if we went through everything in each one of those phases. Okay? But yeah, but that was what the Holy Ghost wanted me to share today was about, you know, wholeheartedness. That do you love the Lord? Do you do what you do because you love the Lord? Okay? And is that your motive? And do you love Him with your whole heart? Or are you holding anything back? And is your heart whole? Uh, are you walking around with scars and infirmities and burdens and rips and tears in your soul? Haven't you ever looked at your clothes and you find a rip or tear in your clothes that you didn't know was there? Your soul works the same way. Haven't you ever looked sometimes up at your body, especially if you're clumsy, and you got a bruise or a scar, you don't even remember what happened, and you hit something or you grabbed something off a shelf or you ran into a door, you did something you don't even remember, and then you look up and you got a scar or a cut or a bruise, and you're like, what the world? Well, you know, that's a breach on your skin, on your body. Your soul works the same way. You can have scars and cuts on your soul. That's why deliverance, casting out demons, forgiveness, Christian counseling, and a confidant needs to be a regular part of your life. Because we accumulate experiences as we go through this life. And that's, I'm sad to say, why some people die early. Because some people are still carrying stuff they've been carrying for years. And you don't have to carry it for years. You can have a whole heart. But you got to follow those steps, those principles I just gave you. Okay? All right. So the prophetic word of the Lord is, Behold, my people, I have called you to wholeness. Wholeness is part of your inheritance. You don't have to stay bound by demons. You don't have to stay bound by experiences. You don't have to stay bound by fear. You don't have to stay bound by your past. But I suffered on the cross for every infirmity, every scar, every sin, every bruise. I took it in my body and I buried it. And when I resurrected on the third day, if you believe in me, you too will have a resurrection. Not just at the, at the last day, but now. Resurrect through my power and get the wholeness that you need inside of your spirit, soul, and body says the Spirit of the living God. Wow! That touched my heart. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at areas where I need that wholeness, where I need to talk, where I need to forgive, where I need deliverance, all that. That just really blessed me. Because the Lord said, He's calling us to wholeness, man. You don't have to be broken. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to keep looking, keep playing that same old tape in your mind about a mistake you made 10 years ago. You don't, uh, something mama said when you were still a child, you don't have to live in that anymore past today. 
You can be whole. You can, you can do what you do because you love the Lord. Then it won't matter what somebody else's attitude is. If somebody else in the church got an attitude, that's not you. You're doing what you're doing because you love the Lord. And because you learn how to surrender and talk to the Lord about everything, there's nothing between you and Jesus, nothing between your soul and your Savior. You can talk to the Lord about anything freely. And because you learn how to get your heart whole, you're not carrying stuff. Some people are overweight because they eat their feelings. And they eat their feelings because deep down inside you're sad. Or you feel abandoned. Or you don't feel attractive. Or you don't feel wanted. Because your parents didn't do what they were supposed to do. You might still be carrying that. And there's no need to run your credit cards up and put yourself in debt because of depression. Because when you get through running up all that debt, those feelings are still going to be there until you work through them. And when you get through eating all that food, then feelings are still going to be there. Do you see what I mean? That's why having a whole heart is so important because it's impacting your health and your finances. All right? Amen and amen. So, let me ask the Holy Ghost if there's other deliverance, other things about physical healing, uh, finances, or any other words he wants me to deliver. When you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm seeing somebody's heart, or I actually kind of saw your blood vessel system, maybe from right here in the middle of your chest, all the way up here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak healing from your heart to your forehead. Do what I'm doing. Put your hand on your heart and then bring it up to your forehead. I speak life. I speak deliverance. Uh, we cast out any stroke demons, any cardiac arrest demons, anything that's blocking your blood flow. And we speak life at every point here from your heart to your head. Let those blood vessels open. Let your blood flow freely. Let your heart be whole and flow freely in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, that's it. So God bless you. I hope this uh, ministry was a blessing to you. I hope this word was a blessing to you. It was a blessing to me. Remember, when the Holy Ghost is saying stuff through me, I'm hearing it just like you're hearing it. And it's ministering to my soul as well. So I'm, I'm excited about being all the way whole. If there's anything I'm still caring that I need healing from, I'm excited about, about getting it out. So, uh, so remember this week the challenge is... Uh, dealing with God with your whole heart. Do you do what you do because you love the Lord? Okay, did you get involved with Christianity because of the love of God? Or was is there some other reason? Do you love the Lord with your whole heart? Are you talking to Jesus about everything? Is there any part of your life you're holding back from Christ? And is your heart whole? Are you carrying anything that you need a deliverance or healing or forgiveness or counseling from? Okay, amen. All right. Uh, following Jesus says, I need to pray for them. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for following Jesus right now uh, because they need encouragement, oh God. Lord, if there's any depression or heaviness in the heart, if there's any scar in the emotions, if there's anything that they're carrying that's not from you, oh God, I ask you to heal them and deliver them. Oh God, right now we rebuke the spirit of depression. We rebuke the spirit of chronic pain. We rebuke the spirit of feeling like you have to be down all the time. And I speak joy, and I speak life, and I speak release, and I speak forgiveness to your soul right now so that the encouragement of God can flow through you, flow through you freely and you can have the joy of the Lord in fullest measure. In Jesus' name we pray and declare it. Amen. Amen and amen. Any other prayer requests, put them up on the screen. Remember, I'm on every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live and Periscope. And then my Periscope is also simultaneously broadcast on my Twitter. And then about an hour, hour and a half from now, I'll put this video up on YouTube so you can watch the replay, you know, at three, four different places. Uh, if you want to sow into my ministry, I do have a Zelle account. My Zelle is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. So I always put that on my Facebook Live as well. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, you want to sow into it. 
Uh, amen. So I've got a whole bunch of things coming out this year, uh, a whole bunch of new materials, both ministry materials are coming out and then also some books on my author side uh, that I'm releasing. So I will let you know here on my Prophet David Taylor channel as well as I always do Facebook lives when I have a new launch, but I normally do those through my author account and my uh, personal page. So I'll let you know here because some of those launches are going to be ministry tools. Some of those launches are some things that I've written specifically for the body of Christ. So I want to be sure that you have, uh, you want to know that you know when that stuff is coming out too. So thank you. God bless. Thank, thank you for all those of you that tuned in live. Thank you for those of you that are watching the replay and may the word of God be a blessing to you and may you have wholeness in your heart. Love the Lord, serve the Lord, uh, surrender everything to the Lord and may you not be carrying anything that's hindering you that your joy might be full and complete. Okay, I will see you next Sunday, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time and then I'll be on August 8th, 7 p.m. for my No More Genies broadcast. All right. Amen. God bless. Have a good rest of your Sunday and have a great week.